Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, we are going to create this fun geometric pattern in Adobe Photoshop. If you'd like the design files for this tutorial, you can join me over on Patreon. As a patron, you'll get access to all the design files from my Photoshop tutorials. You will also get access to my Photoshop actions for pattern design. If you decide to join me on Patreon, thank you for the support. It helps me so that I can keep making these tutorials for you. To start off with, let's go ahead and create a new file. For this tutorial, we're going to use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. Resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color. And then background content set to transparent. Go ahead and click on create. To start off with, I'm going to set my default colors by clicking D on the keyboard here. And then we are going to access the rectangle tool. Hitting Shift U, you can access the uh, rectangle tool. If you need to toggle between, you can hit the U, Shift U, and then it will bring up the tool or you can right click to select the tool that you prefer. Just clicking on the canvas here, I'm going to go a 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels and then just click on OK. Uh, with this, I'm going to uh, center it on my canvas using one of my Photoshop actions here. I've designed these Photoshop actions to help to improve the overall workflow when it comes to pattern design and I use them all the time. I will leave a link to them in the description below where you can purchase them in my Etsy shop or if you uh, join me over on Patreon, you'll get access to these actions as well. With this rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a smart object. You can do that by going right click convert to smart object or I can select my action here which will convert it to the smart object. Hitting V on the keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and just reduce the size here a little bit and then just clicking on OK, we'll hit center that object again and then I'm going to rotate it. So if you hover uh, towards the bottom here, you'll see the rotation icon and you can start to rotate it and you can just type in 45 degrees here. Clicking on OK and then I'm going to go ahead, uh, zooming out a little bit, Command minus key. I'm going to uh, decrease the size here until we uh, hit the edges. To make sure we have our nice diamond here that is uh, perfectly shaped to our canvas here. And then I'm just going to hit that center object one more time to make sure we are in the center. And then the next step is you could duplicate this uh, rectangle and add it to each of the four corners. I've created an action to uh, speed up that process here and I'm going to select that action here and it's added a repeat of that to all of the four corners to all of the four corners there. Clicking on my original rectangle here, I'm just going to uh, double click on our smart object. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, command minus key. Uh, because we made that smart object first um, as the non-rotated rectangle, we can, act, we can now uh, make changes to that rectangle now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off this layer here. Uh, just creating a new layer here and then I'm going to add some guides. So we're going to go to view new guide layout. Uh, for this we are going to go add two columns and two rows, clearing out this gutter here um, as well as turning off the margins here. So I have two columns, two rows and then just click on OK. Accessing the marquee tool, I'm on the keyboard, the tool here, and then we are just going to use those guides to help us drag out a square. And then with my foreground color selected as black, I'm going to hit Option Delete for Mac users or Alt Backspace for PC. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill in those pixels there. Command or Control D to deselect that area. With this layer selected, I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And then we are going to duplicate this till we have four copies. So we have Command J to duplicate it. And so we have four of those. And then just feed it, access my move tool. And then I am going to bring that to each of the four areas on the canvas here. 
Clicking in to this smart object, I'm going to go ahead and turn off that layer there. We're going to go to view, new guide layout. From here, we are going to select clear existing guides, and then I'm going to I'm going to set my columns to four. We are going to have rows just be one row here. I am going to set my gutter width to be uh, 30 pixels here. And then I also want a margin on the outside uh, because I want it to match my gutter width of 30. I'm going to put 15 pixels on each of these values here. Uh, that way when it connects from this side to this side, it equals um, 30 pixels together. So we have the basis of our layout here. We can go ahead and click on OK. I'm accessing the marquee tool. I'm on the keyboard. I'm going to use those guides to help me draw out my rectangles. Here at the top, you'll want to make sure this second icon is selected so you can add to your selection. Um, ignoring the gutter width there, we will draw our next rectangle and then we'll continue to do that here until we have drawn out all four of our rectangles here. We'll select a new layer here and then I'm going to go Option Delete or Alt Backspace to fill in that area and then I can deselect Command or Control D to deselect everything there. Uh, turning on this back layer here, I'm going to select it and then I'm just going to select a new color here and then just fill it with my foreground option delete or alt backspace here. And I like to, in the next step, we are going to be rotating this object and I like when we're using the smart object, I like it to contain its full area. So I uh, turn that back layer back on. Um, to do this next step. So I'm going to save this command or control save command or control W to exit it out and now we are back to uh, this step here. So V to get my move tool here we are going to uh, select this upper right area here and then I am going to rotate this 90 degrees. Uh, to do that you can go command or control T to access the rotation here. Um, uh, for this step, I'm going to use an action just to rotate it 90 degrees here, and then we'll go to this bottom one here, and then we will also rotate this 90 degrees clockwise, so we have our rotation there. Now that we have it set the way we want it, I'm going to go back into this smart object, turn off this layer. I find that sometimes when I don't have all of my pixels uh, filled in on this layer, sometimes the rotations get a little funky. Um, so I always like to add this colored layer first, do my rotations, and then come back in to turn it off. So we'll go Command or Control S to save it, and then Command or Control W to close out. And then we now have our pattern here with the transparent background. So we'll go ahead and save this one as well, Command or Control S. Command or Control W to close it. And now we have our repeating pattern here. So let's go ahead and define this as a pattern. You can go to Edit, Define Pattern. I also have a Photoshop action for that. Um, we'll bring up the Patterns panel, we'll click on it, and then you can see our newly created pattern swatch here. And then let's go ahead and test this out in a new document. So let's go to File, New. This time I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. Resolution set to 300 pixels per inch. Color mode is RGB color. Background content set to transparent. And then click on create. From here, I'm going to use one of my actions called pattern test, which basically brings up a color fill layer, a pattern fill adjustment layer, and then a color fill layer for the background color. To access these different layers, you can click on this icon to select your color, solid color, or your pattern layer. With this pattern fill layer, I'm going to select the newly created pattern here, and we can see it, our design in repeat. Uh, let's go ahead and change out the color here. I will just select that pink color here again. And then um, what's nice about these color fill layers is you can easily change out the colors. Uh, try out different colors here. We'll go ahead and turn this one back to white. And then if you want to export this as digital scrapbook paper, all you'll go to is File, Export, Export As. 
Here under file settings, under format, you can change it to JPEG. And then when it comes to a uh, digital scrapbook paper, typically you want a high quality. So you can change out the quality here. Um, just note the higher the quality, the larger the file size. And then scrolling down under color space, I like to make sure embed color profile is selected and then just click to export your digital paper. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this fun uh, geometric repeating pattern using grids. Again, if you want to access all of the design files from my tutorials here on YouTube, you can join me over on Patreon. When you sign up to be a patron, you'll get access to these design files as well as the Photoshop actions for pattern design that I used in my tutorial. If you decide to join me on Patreon, I thank you for your support. It helps me to uh, keep making these tutorial videos. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other pattern tutorials. Thank you for watching this video. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.